Welcome to Student Ministry That Matters. I'm Ben Trueblood, and today we are going to talk about peace on earth. So peace on earth is a phrase that you hear a lot during this time of year. Rarely do you hear it outside of the Christmas season, but right now, peace on earth is something that you probably see around a good bit. And I wonder what images come to your mind when you think about the word peace. I can tell you for me, there are a couple images that anytime someone talks about peace, these come racing to the front of my brain. And they both have to do with the outdoors. Now, if you've ever been in the woods or in the forest before sunrise, it is still and quiet. And then as the sun begins to come up, you can literally hear the world waking up. You can hear nature waking up. You can hear the forest begin to spring to life as the sun rises. And it is one of the most peaceful things that I can come up with. The, the image just floods my brain when we think about peace. The other one also has to do with the outdoors. And it's, uh, if you've ever been on the lake um, early in the morning or late in the evening, after everything's kind of calmed down or before everything gets started, the water is just as smooth as glass. And it is an amazing, peaceful moment. Those are the images that come to my mind when I think about peace. Now, peace is a central theme to the Christmas season. I mentioned peace on earth at the very beginning. And that's a phrase that is sung about. It's prominent in design and marketing and decoration during this time of year. Yet, we live in a world that is more peace less than it is peaceful. Now, this isn't new for the world. And I think it's important for us, anytime we think about our culture or the struggles of the world, I think it's important to remember that it's not really new. Maybe we hear about it more because we can know what's going on on the other side of the world in seconds because of social media and technology. But peacelessness is not anything new to the world. In fact, if we go back and really look at scripture and the history of our world, we see that peace is something that our world has longed for since the moment of sin in the garden to Cain's murder of Abel and fast forward through all the evidence of our world longing for peace up until this moment right in front of us right now. And we see things like racial injustices and we see things like our politics and we could go on and name more and more and more of these examples of a lack of peace that exists in our world, of, of us longing for peace. Now, peace stands out in our culture. It's something that separates us as believers. Colossians 3 instructs us to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. And I think the word rule is so significant there because it takes something with absolute power to override the peacelessness that exists all around us. To be able to live life on calm water amidst a raging storm takes something supernatural. It takes Christ ruling in our hearts. And this is something that our students need to be introduced to in this season and every other season moving forward. Now, we've all heard the anxiety statistics as they relate to teenagers, and we know that anxiety is on an exponential rise. It's peacelessness. We know that the suicide rate is climbing among that age group that we minister to. And that's peacelessness. We know that they see more unhealthy disagreement and unhealthy public discourse than at any other point before. Peacelessness. Except for Christmas, we rarely talk about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. And I think that that needs to change. Our students need to be introduced to the calm waters of Jesus. They need to understand that while the world may be without peace, they can be at peace spiritually through him. Now, that doesn't mean that the, it doesn't mean that the peacelessness of the world goes away. It doesn't mean that the struggle goes away. It doesn't mean that all of that stuff goes away. But in the midst of that, we can find that calm water. 
We can find that moments before dawn feeling spiritually. And our students need to catch a glimpse of the hope that one day there will be final reconciliation and all things will be made new. Now, here's where it really becomes practical. Missionally, I am becoming more convinced. I would love to hear what you think on this. So if you want to leave a comment about this later, that would be great. But missionally, I am becoming more convinced that there may be no greater evidence of the gospel at work in someone's life than a person who's living a life with a heart ruled by the peace of Christ. And that's because a person's life who is ruled by the peace of Christ is so different from what people see in our world every single day. This season, I want to challenge you to take some time to think about how you can model and teach what it means to live in peace. It's a theme that's needed now more than ever. It's a theme that's needed at Christmas, and it's a theme that's needed beyond Christmas. And it's a theme that's needed because the people that you work with, the teenagers that you work with, are in desperate need of the peace found only in Christ. And you, student pastor, you are a person who is in desperate need of Christ's peace. And so am I. And so I hope that you can find some time to think and dwell on the peace of Christ ruling in your heart and how you can help your students to understand how the peace of Christ can rule in their hearts as well. Thanks for watching Student Ministry That Matters today. Like and subscribe on your way out. We'll see you next time.